Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Wednesday, September the 27th, 2023. It is currently 2.23 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from the Theology Central studio located right here in Abilene, Texas. Well, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try to accomplish two things. One, I'm going to give you a very important update, and then I'm going to kind of ask a question about ministry and about those of us who produce, well, ministry content, right? Produce Bible studies and devotionals and sermons and Bible studies and and well, a Bible pop quiz, I question about, and I think it's a, it's a question about those of us who produce all of that kind of content, those of us involved in ministry. And it's somewhat of a controversial question because a lot of people don't really like to hear any discussion about it. But I think this is going to be the episode where we're going to have to talk about it. All right. So before we get to the update, a little bit of background. We were notified, what was it now, a week ago, two weeks ago? That the cost of live streaming, the cost of broadcasting, the cost of having all of our content available for you to download free of charge, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that cost was going to go up. And we were going to find ourselves, we're going to find ourselves very soon paying $2,400 a year to be able to produce, to be able to present to you, to make available to you all of our content. $2,400 a year. That's, that's going to be the cost. And I, and I'm looking at that going, I don't know how that's not sustainable. There's just no way in the current state of things that, that, a week we can pull this off. So we're going to have to, we've got to ask some very important questions and the future of this podcast is in question and I don't know what to do. So I brought, I just brought the facts to everyone said, Hey, here's the situation, ladies and gentlemen, here's the situation. $2,400 a year. Don't know if it's sustainable. So I don't know. We're going to wait till January of 2024 to make those really tough decisions. And really, who knows? Maybe it's the end of the Theology Central podcast. Maybe it's the end of all of my theological podcasting. And maybe I then take my love and desire for podcasting and move it into a more non-ministerial direction, right? I could talk about so many other topics and subjects and who knows what I could do. Uh, so, um, uh, okay. Uh, someone just asked a question. I mean, you, there's a, um, you can, if you email me, newsif at yahoo.com, someone's asking a question. Is there another way to donate? If you email me at newsif at yahoo.com, that's newsif at yahoo.com, we could probably work out a different way uh, to donate if one so chooses. Or, or you could tell me what your, what your, how, the different ways you could possibly contribute and then we could work out uh, um, a different plan. But what, once we, we, once we realize, so t- that was just answering a question in the chat for those who are trying to figure out why I got sidetracked right there, because that's a, an important question. So thank you very much for asking. But yes, our current way of donating to us is is through PayPal, and you can do so through theologycentral.net, hit the donate tab, or the Church One app, hit the give tab, or the Sermons 2.0 app, hit the uh, give tab. But uh, we'll, we, we may be able to work out some other options as well, but we'll, we'll look at that down the road. So once we realized that the prices was going up, I turned on the microphone and told everyone, hey, here's the situation. $2,400. Now that sounds like a lot. It basically is $200 a month. If you have, you know, uh, basically you, you have 20 people giving $10 a month, you're, you're pretty much there. You're pretty much there. And if you look at the number of people listening to this podcast, we're in the top 5% of all podcasts in the world. We should be able to pull off 20 people giving $10 a month. You think that would be, you think we could, we could accomplish that in one broadcast. Hey, just need 20 people giving to, and then it, and then the podcast is paid for and then end of story, the end. Um, you, you think that it would be relatively simple. In fact, you think you would be able to to get, you know, far more than 20 people giving $10 a month or get, get a lot more people giving $5 a month, whatever the case may be. You think that that's how it would go. But of course, it's not the way it really works in real life. So, but we, we went ahead and gave that information and I was like, okay, we'll just kind of wait and see. Um, I'm not going to say much more about it until 
uh, maybe once in October, once in uh, you know November, maybe once in December, and then and then kind of give up what whatever my final decision is in January. Make that decision. And just and just have to make, you know, you just have to figure it out. You know, there, there's different ways we could possibly, you know, stop broadcasting on this platform. There's ways to try to cut the cost and that could have massive impact on our podcasting numbers. And then, yeah, there's just so many like pros and cons and trying to figure it all out. So I didn't give it much thought, didn't give it much thought. I did get, a, you know, a note, an email just the other day that, again, one of our platforms that we broadcast on, I got the receipt. We were just charged $50, you know, just uh, what, in the last 48 hours for broadcasting on uh, one one such platform. So you're, you just feel you know, like every time you turn around, you're getting a receipt. Hey, <laughs> you just paid money for this, You just, money for this, money for this, money for that. And, and at some point you got to go, well, how long is this sustainable? How long do you... How do you do this? Now, there's ways, again, of, of eliminating a lot of options, but then you you drastically cut into your numbers. And don't you want to get your content out to everyone? It's so it's just it's everything about podcasting you don't want to deal with. Like you don't want to deal with any of that. What you want to do is just be able to sit in front of a microphone and hopefully provide content for people that they benefit from. You don't really want to worry about any of this other stuff, but it's just the reality. So I've been thinking and thinking and thinking of what I could possibly do. And this morning I got an idea because our podcasting hosting site, uh, Spreaker, that's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker, they are always contacting me saying, hey, you need to monetize your podcast. Hey, you need to monetize your podcast. Look at your numbers. You need to monetize your podcast. What are you doing? You're throwing away money. Don't. Now, of course, they're saying that because, you know, they, they get a percentage of whatever you earn if you monetize your podcast. But I, you know, I've, I've said no, 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 no. And I'm still not necessarily a fan of the idea, but I, I would like to test it. So I'm like, I know what I'll do. We have this new podcast, the Bible Pop Quiz Podcast. Right, we've made it its own separate podcast. Now the content is available on all of these other platforms, but we've made it its own podcast. In fact, if you go to the Spreaker app, if you're using the Spreaker app, you can do a search for the Bible Pop Quiz. You will find the podcast, right, and you can follow it. So I thought, you know what, this would be a good time to test it. This would be a good chance to test monetization and see what happens. So just about 15 minutes ago, maybe 20 minutes ago, I received an email saying, hey, the commercials are live on your podcast. Now, whenever people listen, stream, download on the Spreaker app, you're going to get like 20% extra income uh, on top of what you would normally get if people are listening on, on, on other platforms. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see what happens. So I thought I would turn on the microphone and let everyone know. I want you to go listen to it now. Now, I know this is going to sound like a way to try to make some money, but but reality is, I, and I truly mean this, I need everyone to download the Spreaker app today, Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker. Once you download the Spreaker app, I need you to look for the Bible Pop Quiz, follow it, and then listen to one or two episodes. Listen to the beginning and listen to the very end, right? Just listen to the beginning and the end. That's where the ads are going to be. We did what's called a pre-roll and a post-roll ads. Pre-roll meaning before the show starts and post meaning at the end. We did not do a mid-roll. Now that means we're going to lose money because the mid-roll is where you can really earn some extra cash, but we did not do that. In fact, I had someone um, email me saying, hey, do the pre-roll, do the post-roll. Well, we can skip the ads. Now, if you skip the ads, I don't know if I get, <laughs> I don't know if I get any money, but okay. All right. So I, I don't know if that's a help. I don't know if that's helpful or not. Hey, make sure you put the ads at the beginning and the end so I can skip them. Okay. Well, that's great. But if I, if I don't get paid, then there's no point in monetizing the podcast. Right. So we've, we've placed them there and now we're just going to wait and see what happens. But I want you to, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to listen. And if you feel that it's, it's irritating if you feel like it cheapens the podcast if it if you don't believe it really belongs on a on a bible pop quiz podcast if, if i mean any any 
Any feelings you have, no matter how negative they are, by all means, email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, because I really want to, I want to gauge your, as, as just a listener, you, you, you're going through a podcast app and you're like, oh, the Bible pop quiz, let me hit play. Oh man, there's a commercial. Does that mean like, uh, I'm not going to listen to this? Are you going to be like, that, I feel that that's just wrong. That's sinful. That's ungodly. Now it's easy to sit there and say it's sinful and ungodly. <laughs> When you're not the one making the monthly payment, right? It's easy to go. Why would they put commercials there? It's easy to do so if you're not, you, you know, you're not the one pay, paying the bills. But uh, it's I, I, again, I, I look. There's a part of me that I still feel it's wrong. So I, I, look, I'm I'm right there with you in a lot of ways. But I like to get the overall feedback. Some of you may not even you may not even care. It may not even matter to you. But they are currently there. In fact, you want to hear how it sounds. Here, I just, I downloaded one just a few, just a couple of minutes ago. Here is from uh, our episode. I think it's from today's episode. This comes from the episode that aired today, September the 27th, the Bible pop quiz today. Here is what the ad, here's the pre-roll ad. Here's what it sounds like. All right, here we go. Gee, honey, those new shoes look great on you. And look, they show off my new toenails too. New toenails? What happened to the old ones? (laughs) Well, they're not really new, just clear and healthy looking. Remember how embarrassed I was? They were so discolored, really awful looking. Well, they sure look clear now. I wish I could wear sandals again. My toenails are a disaster. Look, this one looks white and that one's thick and yellow. Here's my secret. Non-X Nail Gel. It clears out yellowing keratin debris, the cause of nail discoloration. So that's it. I've got ugly keratin debris build up under my nails. And Non-X Nail Gel gets rid of it. You'll need to use it daily, but clear nails are worth it. You bet. When we go to the beach next summer, my toenails are going to look just as good as yours do. Thanks to Non-X Nail Gel. Non-X Nail Gel for clear, healthy-looking nails. Now at Walmart, Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS, and other fine pharmacies. In the foot care section. We're the bank you've always known and trusted. A part of your community for generations. And now... You see how irritating that can be? All right? You see how irritating that can be? That, that, that's, that's irritating. All right. Uh, that, uh, that's, that's so, so irritating. Uh, I, I, I hate that. See, that's already one commercial. Now they're going into a second commercial. They're going into a second commercial. Let, let's, let's let the second commercial play out. First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you, but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since 1883. Member FDIC. And then that's where I, I come in. So two commercials. I That's what, 30, was that 30 seconds maybe? Maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute? I don't, I, oh, that, see, I don't, oh, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Someone asked, uh, so does it, so it doesn't help uh, for us to listen live in this case. Now, I don't know how that will work if you're listening to a live stream. What I'll do is the next time I do a Bible pop quiz, I will go live, not on the Theology Central podcast. I will go live on the Bible pop quiz. So I don't know when I get ready to hit go live, it's going to run a commercial before I can actually start talking. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. That these are the little things we're going to have to figure out. And you're just kind of being, you're, you're, you're just kind of part of the experiment, right? You're the guinea pigs, right? You're, you're the, you're, 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 you're the people like, Hey, Hey, I need you. I need you to be a part of this. I don't know how it's all going to play out, but we will see. Uh, but so that, that's the plan. So here's what's going to happen. At least in the short term, this is a short term experiment. Trust me, this is not the direction I would necessarily want to go, but I, it'll be interesting to say, see. So this is what's going to happen. Currently, you'll notice that the Bible pop quizzes are showing up on the Theology Central podcast, right? They're now going to just be exclusively on the Bible pop quiz uh, podcast. That's where they're going to be. I'm not going to put them on the Theology Central for now. However, because I know someone, I know I'm going to get emails probably soon or comments on YouTube. I said, I'm not going to listen anymore because you have commercials. 
they the Bible pop quizzes will still be available on the Church One app and the Sermons 2.0 app without commercials. Because I don't want anyone to accuse me that, hey, you're going to, you're trying, see, you're putting it behind a paywall. No, it, it's still going to be a, and so if you don't want to support it, like some people don't want to support in any way, shape or form, right? So if you don't, you can just go to the Church One app, Sermons 2.0 app, listen to the Bible Pop Quiz, commercial free, and you don't have to worry, it's free for you, you don't have to worry about a thing. All right. So the, I, I do promise you that, but I am going to move it off the Theology Central podcast and it's going to be in the Bible Pop Quiz podcast. Now, when you listen to it on Spreaker, I get more money. Now, if you subscribe to the Bible Pop Quiz podcast on any other platform, Pocket Cast, uh, uh, Potter, uh, uh, Potterama, Potterama, I think is how we decided to, to pronounce it, Spotify, anywhere else. Guess what? I still will get money, but I will get less. Well, obviously, Spreaker wants you to use their app. They want you to use their platform, obviously. And so they want the podcaster to become a spokesman for the Spreaker podcasting app to get people there because the podcaster is it gets extra money by getting people to listen. It's all it's it's just business. It just see that's what happens. This all becomes business. See, this is what I loathe about it. Right? Is I, I don't like a theology podcaster or anything to become a business. It just, it just feels so wrong. That's what so much about church. I hate churches. They become a business. There's business meetings and their budgets. And it's just like, it all feels so wrong. So I'm still not convinced I'm going to do this very long, right? When I was doing a secular podcast, I didn't care how much business it felt like. I didn't care. You know, yeah. Oh, 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 Taylor Swift's about to drop an album. Let's drop a podcast right now. Oh, I got 44,000 downloads in about, I don't know, 24 minutes. I rem- I'll, I'll never forget that night. I think by the next morning I had 144,000 downloads. I think I made a hundred dollars in like, I made a hundred dollars in maybe like an hour. It was crazy. I was like, this is, this is the way to go. But see, I gave that up because I'm, I, I'm trying to like, I want to do, I would rather talk about theology and that. The only problem is the other one I make, I make money to cover way beyond the expense of broadcasting. And this is like, well, you either have to beg and plead and plead and plead and plead, which is no fun, or you got to figure out what to do, or you just, you just really limit your ability. I mean, cause look, look, here's, I've, I talked about this already. We can drop Spreaker tomorrow. Wipe it out. That's our podcast hosting site, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we're in the top 5% of all podcasts. We cut that. That saves us $140 a month. We drop Spreaker. I save us $140 a month, just like that. Then if we just broadcast on Church One and Sermons 2.0, they're increasing the price. That'd be 60. That would only be $60 a month. $60 a month is a whole lot easier to afford than $200, obviously, right? And then if, if that didn't work, then I guess I could drop all of that. And then I could try to go with maybe Anchor, well, which is now Spotify for podcasters. I, I don't think they charge you any money to, to be there, but we would only basically be on Spotify. And then yeah, I mean, I mean, you could, you could just, you could try to, you can, you can just go for the cheapest way around it. And you, you basically, you're, you're just, you're just, you know, people are going to have a hard time finding your content. So, I mean, that that's, that's, I mean, I've got every contingency I can, I can think of. I've worked, I've spent late nights thinking this all through, working this out, but I just wanted you to hear what those commercials sound like. And I don't know if that bothers you. And then at the very end, I'm going to fast forward this to the end. Let me see if I can find out where the commercial is. Beneficial. All right. If you have any questions, email me news, I F at, at yahoo.com news, I F at yahoo.com. Thank you so much for listening. That is your Bible pop quiz for Wednesday, September the 27th, 2023. May God bless you as you search his word for the answers to these important questions. God bless.
Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. See, then you get a commercial for a casino. See, do you want that on your podcast? See, that? See, these are the problems that come with that. See, someone will hear that and be offended by it. Be offended by it. And so then, then so what do you do? So what do you do? You have no control over what they're going to put there. You have no control. Now, the problem is with the, the uh, post-roll uh, commercial, most people are not even going to listen to that. They're not even going to listen to it. So I don't know if, I, if I'll get paid for that or not. See, that these are all the issues. But see, then you got who knows what commercials are going to be put there. See, these are, these are the never ending. So I could try to go in and say, no, remove this commercial and remove. And the, the more commercials I start removing... Then the, the 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 less money goes down. Um, yeah, I may have to shorten, or, or I may have to eliminate the outro music. See, that's probably what I'll have to do is eliminate the outro music. I'll just have to eliminate it, right? I'll just have to completely eliminate it because as soon as as soon as, in fact, yeah, I mean that's the only that's the only hope to there. And see, this all comes like strate- strategizing. I, I'm not a fan of this entire. Like, uh, I know I'm talking about it live uh yeah see i uh, see someone just say someone just said oof that could be a uh, trouble for me i know i know it could be i see that's that's the problem you're gonna have that's the problem you're going to have and uh i it, it's not it's I'm, I'm telling you it's not going to be the sustainable uh solution so that's what's going on that's the update so I wanted, I didn't want to just waste, I didn't want to just waste everyone's time with that. So I wanted to at least address this. An article was published on April the 24th, 2023. And the article is entitled this, should I get paid for ministry? Should I get paid for ministry? That's a question nobody really wants to talk about, right? Because again, it's so seems so fleshly, so carnal, so, so, oh, like, you know, you, you, you want to imagine ministry is like a million miles away from money, that ministry is a million miles away from all of those fleshly, carnal, earthly concerns. It's just, you know, someone with a Bible, just teaching, and that none of those other issues ever come to mind. That's the way you want to envision it. That's the way you want it to be. But it, it, it's, it's not that way. This is how they approach the subject, and you can see whether you agree or disagree with them. Here's what they have to say, all right? It says, at what point should a person be paid for ministry? Right, that's, that's a good question. They go, they, they, they go on and say this. This is a great question to be asked by both sides, by those who would pay and those who would be paid, because there are two parties to this, right? The people who would be doing the paying and the person who would be paid. Suppose we saw somebody with the best training taught directly by the resurrected Jesus, whose work experience included planting churches, training uh, training leadership, whose skills included supernatural powers to heal, and whose writing was inspired by God. Well, if that person also oversaw the health of many churches in the region, provided mentorship and guidance to the church leaders, and bore the cost of difficult decisions through shipwrecks, beatings, and imprisonment, then it says, of course, we're talking about the Apostle Paul who, according to the economics of today, should have been the highest paid minister in history. But the witness of the Bible is that Paul consistently supported himself and his own ministry. There's a little bit of truth to that. So how how should this work? Where are they going to go with this? All right, then they say this. What's perhaps surprising is that Paul consistently argued ministers deserve pay even as he personally ministered free of charge. Paul, along with the rest of the Bible, at the same, at, at the very same time, affirms that ministers deserve pay and yet that ministers ought to serve free of charge. That's kind of the conflicting biblical ideas here. Like on one hand, yeah, but a pastor should be paid. On the other hand, they should be willing to serve for free. Okay, well, how do you work that? Not only pastors, but anyone ministering, anyone doing that. Now, in a podcast, you can say, well, you're not really a minister. So, like, how does that work? Well, you know, hey, there's so many questions here. 
They go on to say this. Consider when, Je- consider when Jesus sends out the disciples to proclaim the gospel, he tells them, first, you receive, you, first, you received without paying, give without pay. Matthew 10, 8. Now, it's kind of an interesting paraphrase of it, but hey, you received without paying. You received freely, so you give freely. But he also tells them not to bring supplies with them because they should expect support. After all, the laborers deserves his food. Matthew 10, 10. Paul twice, Paul twice argues that you should not muzzle the ox and the worker deserves his wages. 1 Timothy 5 and 1 Corinthians 9. To explain that elders who rule and teach, as well as apostles who are sent on missions, deserve financial support. Soldiers don't serve at their own expense and those who plant enjoy the fruit. 1 Corinthians 9, 7 through 10. And this this idea is definitely in scripture that, hey, those ministering should benefit from it. They should be supported for. They should be, there should be some support there. At the same time, Paul sees working free of charge as an example that others ought to follow. He tells the Thessalonians that while he had the right to financial support, he worked physical labor to support himself to give the church an example to imitate. 2 Thessalonians 3, 9, Paul famously made tents with Priscilla and Aquila to support himself while he ministered in Corinth. In other words, in a sense, a bivocational minister. And listen, bivocational ministry, I'm very familiar with it because I did that for year after year after year after year to the detriment of myself, my family, my children, my life. It was, it was... I, I, you, whatever supposed g- good or godliness that came from it, it ended and it, it was a disaster. It was an absolute total disaster. It was because I literally was killing myself, killing myself because I full-time job in the mil- in the military, full-time pastor. Oh, full-time student. Oh yeah. Doing a full-time podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was the worst decision ever. And I regret, I regret it and live with guilt for how everything went down there. But it was my own fault. But I thought I was trying to do something right and something godly. I, and, and so that's, a, that's a lot of ways with the, with the Theology Central podcast and with the podcasting today is like, well, if you lose that support, you just go get a job and then you make up that support and then you keep podcasting. Well, no, I, sorry. I, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I'm not going to go work, 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 to bring in money so that I can work, work, work to do podcasting so that I basically then have no life. Now, I'm not, I, I just, I can't, I, I'm not, what, whether you, you can accuse me of being ungodly all day long. It's just, no, it, it, podcasting requires lots of work, lots of time, lots of, lots of behind the scenes things that nobody ever sees the doing this and checking this and checking this and making sure this is uploaded. And is this working? Okay. Oh, wait, this podcasting app, like the Google podcasting uh, app is going away. Okay. Now I got to make sure all of our content transfers smoothly over to YouTube music. I got to, I got to keep that up. I got to make sure this is working, checking analytics, answering emails, checking comments on YouTube or whatever other podcasting apps on one could be saying something about just all of the writing lessons, doing this, putting this together, researching, the, trying to come up with a plan, what we're going to do next. It's work, 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 work. Well, okay. How much work do you do? Well, you, you want to look at it as ministry, not work, but it's effort. So then at what point do you say, am I, do, do I have to work in order to do this work? Or can this work support itself? And if this work can't support itself, then you have to just question what you're doing. And, I, and, I, and it is tough questions that people have to ask himself. He goes, there's an important asymmetry here. Paul exhorts churches to support their elders, but he exhorts all Christians to emulate him serving free of charge. These conflicting commands mean that in any, in any particular instance, determining whether someone should be paid for ministry requires wisdom and should reflect the context of the situation. No single answer applies across circumstances. Now that's, I think that's good. I think, I think every situation does. You have to look at each situation. For example, whether a particular role should be paid in a small town, you know, country church with a small staff and a small budget may be different from the answer for a large church with full-time professional staff and an ample budget. 
With that in mind, there are a couple of questions all institutions and individuals can ask as they approach their own situations. Number one, who is burdened? Paul tells the Thessalonians that his motivation was not to burden them. As he tells the Corinthians, he didn't want to put up any obstacle. Paul worked without pay because receiving assistance would have burdened the church or provided an obstacle to growth. At the same time, the metaphor of a soldier serving at his own expense means that ministers too ought not to be burdened. I think it's true. Like who should be burdened? Well, you don't want to burden people who are giving. You don't want to hurt people who would be giving. But at the same time, do you put yourself under the burden of trying to figure out how to have money, how to keep it going? Like, there's got to be a way, maybe some way of sharing each other's burdens. There's got to be, there's got to be some way. It says, if a church will be burdened by financially supporting a minister, and if the minister would not be burdened by supporting himself, then it would be wise for the minister, uh, the minister to basically minister for free. And I think there, there, there's some truth to that. Even in this case, the minister shall deserve honor and to enjoy the fruit of his labor, which means non-financial forms of recognition, appreciation, or support. Now, I know I, I, I can tell you that way. It goes a long way that sometimes someone may not ever be able to, uh, to support you financially, even in a church or as a podcast, but there's other ways, right? That, uh, that when you get that appreciation, you get some kind of support, you get some kind of encouragement. That can go a lot further sometimes than money, a a lot further. The church can do that, right? Even if the church can't pay a pastor. I mean, I don't know. You could remember the pastor maybe at least in October when it's supposedly, you know, pastor appreciation month. You could at least be remembered. Maybe on your birthday, you could be remembered. Maybe maybe on something you could be remembered. Uh, Or I don't know, show up would be a good thing. I mean, there's lots of different things you can do. So... I think I do like this principle that you don't want people to be burdened and you don't want to be the burden to get in the way of ministry. But at the same time, the minister shouldn't be burdened with trying to figure out how to make it all work. There's got to be a, a, a way to, to work this. They say, but the reverse could also be true. The minister may be burdened by serving free of charge. If he's serving full time as a way to support his family, he should certainly receive a fair wage, even if he's not, even if he's not, uh, even Even if he's not, ministry of all kinds can be incredibly taxing emotionally on one's family. Oh, it can. If a church can alleviate financial burdens, they ought to endeavor to do so. Burdens need not only be financial. In some contexts, paying people can endow the ministry with credibility, but it may also cause resentment or lessening of enthusiasm from volunteers who are serving without pay. Churches should exercise wisdom in determining whether paying someone for his work should, would benefit the work itself. And I think there, that, that's always, there, there requires lots of, in other words, there's lots of layers to this and how it should work, how it should work. Does pay encourage greed and materialism? Well, it, it, it could. I'll be the first to admit it could, right? It could. I mean, like any pastor who denies that, you're just out of your mind, right? Because, because there's a level, in ministry, you can go from, man, I just need the money to make the, the monthly house payment, right? I just need to make my mortgage payment, okay? And then the next thing you know, the church gets bigger and the church gets bigger and you get more money. And the next thing you know, you're not making your mortgage payment. You've already paid off the house. You've bought an extra car. You got a boat and you've got a vacation home. Okay, well, then the next thing you know, that that goes that goes too far. How far is too far, right? How far is too far? F- for example, let's say, let's just say I woke up one day, you know, j- let's just use an imaginary. Let's just woke up. And, and all of a sudden I realized a thousand people, a thousand people were giving $10 a month to support this podcast. A thousand people giving $10 a month. Now, $10 a month probably would not be a massive burden for most people giving. Probably wouldn't be. All right. Okay, it would obviously alleviate, alleviate all burdens for me. Right. I mean, I could, I could get any equipment that I need. We could pay, we could expand, we could put ads, we could do all kinds of things, right? Okay, but I'm not good at math, but a thousand people giving $10 a month, I think at that point, I, I would start making a little bit money. I would start making some money. I would actually start getting paid. And what if that thousand people goes to 1,500 or 2,000? Now, at what point, 
Should a minister then turn the microphone on and go, whoa, whoa, guys, 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 you need to stop. You need to stop. Now it's, you're giving too much. You're giving, you, you, too much is coming in. Too much is coming in, right? Because now it's encouraging greed and materialism. Now it, on the reverse though, the rever- it can, it can, you can flip this around. Sometimes people won't give maybe because they're greedy or they're materialistic and they want the money for themselves. See, greed can go both ways. So everyone always puts the greed. In other words, all of these can be flipped around to to go one other. But I know this as a, as a pastor, you got to be careful, right? And then it says, be generous. We should endeavor to be generous on both sides. Churches endeavor as much as you can to provide for those who serve among you. Servants endeavors as much as you can to serve without burdening those you serve. Ultimately, the rewards for our labor come from God. And I think that's something that has to be uh, remembered. And that's an article entitled, Should Should I Get Paid for Ministry? Um, and you can find it at the gospelcoalition.org if you want to look at it and see whether you agree or not. Someone sent me a long, in-depth study that they've done on giving. Uh, they uh, And uh, I appreciate that. Um, I may use it in some way, shape, or form. But... Um, yeah, this, I think this is an important subject. To, to me, it really comes down to all you can do from the one doing the ministry is you can turn on the microphone and try to do your best. You can provide Bible studies, devotional messages, news commentary. You can, you can just hour after hour putting out content. And you hope, you hope that because of the quantity of your content, hopefully the quality of your content, that someone out there will go, man, I'm, I'm being spiritually fed right here. This is where I'm getting most of my spiritual food. This is where I'm learning. And if that's the case, then they would be like, well, man, if that's where I'm getting all the benefit, then I've got to do something to, to support that. That's how you hope it would work. It doesn't always work that way because you're a podcast. There's a million of them. like, see, like, I know there's a million of me. I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm a nothing because I could be replaced. I, this podcast could go silent right now, and it would be it would it wouldn't matter because you got I got another one to pick up right after that and right after that and right after that. But I wanted to at least update you that we're going to try this. Don't be alarmed. I I, I just, just no way I can do it long term. I just don't think there's any way I can do it long term. I wanted to see what it was like, and I hadn't even listened to the commercials yet. I wanted to hear them with you. I wanted to hear with, with them with you in real time. And what did we get when we got to the end? Yeah, we have a casino ad with obviously a little double meaning going on right there. Yeah, some people are going to find that massively inappropriate. And it took how long for that to happen? The, ve- the very first one I download. That the one from today, the, uh, those are the first, th- what, three ads that they've added and already one of them, you kind of going, ah, uh, not a fan of that. And I know that that's how quickly it can happen, right? That's, 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 that's how quickly it can happen. And see, that's what I told you is always the danger. That's always the danger with doing the ads. And I also said, guess what? All it takes is me to turn on this microphone and say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And guess what? Someone does not want their ad on a theology podcast. So then I have to live in constant fit. Now, I think with a Bible pop quiz, I couldn't say anything to offend anyone. So I, I, I'm pretty safe with that. But if I like, you know, how many listeners is there going to be to the Bible pop quiz podcast? Like, I, I guarantee you the numbers for the Bible pop quiz will probably not even be half of what they are for Theology Central. Probably not even, probably 80% less. I'm assuming the numbers are going to be so small for the Bible pop quiz. So small. So, like, but I wanted to at least see, and I wanted you to see what it, what it looks like, what it feels like. And, and, but please just go look, look for yourself today. Download the Spreaker app. That's S P R E A K E R Spreaker, not speaker, Spreaker. Download the app, look for the Bible pop quiz, follow it, and then just start listening. Just hit listen. Just listen. And then you can see which ads are they similar? Are they different? What subject, what, what, what do they cover? How f- offensive do you rate them? How intrusive do you find them? How, how does it ruin the content of it? And then, you know, we'll make a 
uh, decision. I think it's going to be short lived, but I wanted to do the experiment just to, and just to show you the the complications. It's not so simple. It's like, well, just put ads on your podcast. What's the problem? Well, there's you. You already saw the problem, right? How long did it take? Instantaneous. We have an issue just like that. And all of that does it not feel? Does it feel weird? That you, you, you start, you're going to listen to a Bible pop quiz and the first thing you hear is about toenails. And then the second thing you hear is about banking. And then you hear the music like, welcome to today's pop Bible pop quiz. And then when it's over, you hear about a casino. I, that just seems so not the way I want to go. That, that's my personal feelings. But you can let me know. Email me, newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. We'll wait and see how this all plays out. But in the meantime, please at least check it out. The Bible Pop Quiz. Download, uh, uh, download. If you don't have the Spreaker app, if you have the Spreaker app, just do a search for the Bible Pop Quiz and just listen. And I, it is going to be I, what I'm very interested in is to, I'm curious on how many people have to listen. How many streams and downloads does one have to have before you, let's say, well, how many streams and downloads would one have to be obtain? In order to even get anywhere close to two hundred dollars a month, how many? I, I don't know. I don't. I haven't worked out the mathematical calculation, but I bet you it's a lot. <laughs> I bet you it's a lot. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I know when I was going through Anchor, and I did the secular podcast. Man, they, whew, that money came in. Fast, but I was pulling in some crazy. Not, I mean, we were the number one podcast and, and trending podcast on Spotify. Well, we were beating out everyone. We were beating out NPR, NBC. We, we, I mean, you, BBC. Every we were beating out everyone uh, until Michelle Obama came along, and then we moved down to number two. Uh, so, but we were bringing in numbers, and so, yeah. There you have it. That's the latest. We'll keep you posted. Now. We'll get back to normal broadcasting and our next live broadcast, which hopefully will be coming up soon. And we'll do a little work on dispensationalism this evening. We'll, 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 we'll try to make sure we make up for this, but I felt like I needed to take time. And you can do with that article with what you want, how you feel about ministry and money and how that works. I think they offered a pretty balanced perspective. You can let me know. Again, email me, newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back on the air shortly. God bless.